Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about why you should not pay for medical coding internships. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I've been getting some very disturbing messages from people saying that, you know, they have heard that they can pay for experience um, and they can pay this company and they can work and have experience and, and get a letter if they pay for an internship. This isn't right, guys. I mean, yes, it is very frustrating to get be constantly told no uh, because you don't have experience, but it is not a reason to pay um, somebody for experience. You have technical training. This is why I say all the time, you should never work for free because you have been technically trained. And while you may not have experience, that's still not an excuse for somebody to not pay you. All right. And I know there's a lot of people who do that, who volunteer and, and sometimes, you know, people just take advantage and that's not right. And I feel like people who charge for internships are taking advantage as well because Number one, a, a medical coder is not making money anyway, and you're going to charge them. That's not right. And number two, you know, if people are actually really getting out there and looking for jobs, they will find one. And yes, sometimes it takes a few months to find a job, but that's not unusual and it's not unheard of. But sometimes people want to be so impatient. When I was out looking for a job in the beginning, I, I looked for two whole months and I still... Uh, worked in my other jobs. I cleaned houses. I delivered phone books. I was um, doing uh, working in a halfway house, working as a bartender. I did all of those things and I still continue to work while I look for a job in medical coding. So it's not an excuse to say, well, they're not hiring me. You can still work while you're looking for a job. And I will always advocate for working for the temp agencies because if you get a job with a temp agency as a medical coder, all of the assignments that you're being put on are filler for your resume. It doesn't necessarily have to be years of experience, but it is a start. And a lot of times, sometimes employers, that's just what they want. They want you to have some experience before they'll give you a chance. So the best place to start is a temporary agency. Wasting your money on somebody's internship and only to say this is an internship. Again, employers are going to look at this as this is not work experience. This is not uh, paid experience because for experience to really be on your resume, it needs to be that you were under productivity standards and accuracy standards. That's what work experience is. So when I see people trying to sell off internships, that's not right. And it's not worth it to me uh, to do this to brand new medical coders. But again, people, they're, they're going to do what they want to do. And I know some people are going to hear me and, and not want to listen and they think they know better and they're going to pay this company all this money when you guys can be investing that into learning other things for yourself. And if you keep getting out there and you keep applying for charge entry, for medical biller, for release of information, for prior authorizations, uh, for medical records, anything to get yourself in instead of having that all or nothing. Because some people have that all or nothing uh, type of mentality of I want to be a medical coder. I was trained as a medical coder and that's what I want to do. And if they're not going to hire me for that, then I don't want to work. And or I'm going to go ahead and pay this person, this company. Um, all this money so that I can get work experience when in actuality, is it really going to come out to that? So that's the thing, guys, you need to think about that because there are people that are willing to take advantage of you. And if you allow yourself to be taken advantage of, they have no problem with it. I do not have a dog in the fight. Whether you get into medical coding or not, I have nothing to sell you. Yes, I do have services like resume rewrites and um, cover letter rewrites as well that goes with it, uh, professional coaching and tutoring, but that's all separate. And I never make that my sole focus of my shows, right? I'm always telling you guys, hey, these are the helpful hints and these are the things that you gotta look out for. So again, I'm just letting you guys know that you should never, ever pay for experience. And if you think Practicode is work experience because um, according to AAPC, it is considered for them, for their requirements to remove the A, the apprentice status faster, um, that you, you know, you complete this and the 660 records and, oh yeah, that's, 
that's typically what a one year of work experience would be like. And some people have said, well, just put that down as work experience. It is not. And the employer is going to know this right away because we're all coders. So we know. And so that's the thing. You can't say that either. That's not work experience. Whenever I'm doing a resume uh, and I'm and somebody went through that, I put that under education uh, because that's exactly what it is. It's an educational program. It is not considered work experience. Again, to be considered work experience, you need to have um, productivity and accuracy standards in order for that, that work experience to be legitimate. So that's just something that you guys ought to know. Again, uh, working for free or paying somebody to say that, oh yeah, I worked for you, that's just never a good thing, okay? Don't do that to yourselves. Take pride in the things that you've been taught and take pride in your skill. And so if you have to keep applying, just keep applying. Make sure that your resume looks good. I have plenty of videos on my channel, advice for um, new, uh, new medical coders for resume tips. I have a ton of those. And if you're interested in getting a rewrite, my uh, rate and my contact information is in the description box below. But I want you guys to know that when you are out there and you are trying to find a way to get in, again, going through alternative positions like charge entry or uh, medical records or going through medical billing, these are all going to give you things that's going to you know, give you some exposure to the codes. And that's what you want. When you are looking at alternative positions, you want things that are closely related or that are going to get you some kind of contact with the people that are doing the hiring for the medical coders. It is not impossible, but it does take a lot of tenacity to go after what you want. And for people that they want to give up so easily on the job search, guys, that's what happens when you want to give up easily. You, you won't get what you want. But if you keep after it, you will get what you want. And trust me, I have seen it time and time again. I get the letters. I get the comments. I get, I get people contacting me all the time saying that they're glad that they stuck with it because now they finally found a job. It took them for a while, <laughs> but they finally found it. And now they're, they're coding and they're happy. So it is out there. You just have to be persistent. And for people who are waiting on the sidelines for the job description to say entry level, you have to apply for jobs that are still asking for experience because when you wait um, for those entry level positions, there are going to be hundreds of people applying for those entry level positions. Meanwhile, if you've been applying, like I've been telling you all to apply um, on these positions that are even asking for experience and you're still applying because again, every coder that has experience is going to be employed somewhere unless they want to move or unless they, they, get tired of where they're at, um, they're going to stay there. And so that's the only way you're going to be able to get your shot is by putting yourself in front of those people that are doing the hiring. Okay. And you can't be scared about it. You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, we were all there once. Everybody, everybody was there as a medical coder starting out. Okay. So look and, and keep looking and look under alternative names. Don't just look under medical coder because sometimes they're under weird names like revenue cycle tech or medical records tech or something like that. I mean, it's just different names. <laughs> it's just oddball names sometimes. Health information technician, you know? So they, they call them all kinds of names. So just make sure that you are using all different kinds of titles and reading the job descriptions so that way you can see what they're really looking for and what they're asking for. And are those things that you have, those skills or any of those in your resume? Because it does make all the difference in the world, what your resume says about you. If you are going out there ill prepared and your resume is not up to par and it doesn't have all of your skills and training on there, you know, that's, that could be the reason that you're missing out on a lot of opportunities. Okay. So, don't try to go the shortcut way. Don't try to pay your way out of that. Uh, the only time you should be paying for anything is for education. And at that, it needs to be quality education, not just some flim flam thing, you know, that, oh, okay, you know, uh, we have this program and, you know, whatever. <laughs> you need to make sure that it's a quality program that you're going to be getting into or that you're getting quality education. Or maybe you want to look at some more, getting different books uh, to work with, different workbooks. I talk about the workbooks that I recommend all the time. 
the, the links, um, the Amazon links are in the description box below. You don't have to click on those links as I may get a commission if you do. Uh, but you can check those out and see if that will help you as well. Okay, just stick with it, guys. Um, and don't be taken advantage of by these people trying to charge for internships because it's just not worth it. It's just my advice anyway. So I'm going to wrap this one up. It's a very short message, but hopefully it will get out there. So uh, if you uh, have liked this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.